we've got now the judiciary and the executive over several judicial appointments finding themselves in a tug of war and the government of the day just sits for months in his case for years on appointments at a time when la a number of courts are short of judges and no reasons are attributed instead the law minister of the country is today saying get rid of this collegium system let's have a new system where the executive also has a role in deciding judges see as uh, i did i firmly believe that the collegium system is out of sync is out of sync yes firstly it is not provided by law it's not a creature of the law or the constitution it was never meant to be there it's a power which has been arrogated by the supreme court to itself in what is called the second judges case in the year 1993 it should never have been there once you arrogate power to yourself nobody practically wants to give up that power and that is why they have hung on to this power now having hung on to this power they should at least till the time this judgment is not overturned or the njac judgment is not overturned till that time even if the system is opaque even if it is imperfect whatever decision it takes must be followed ultimately that is the bottom line and now i mean the law minister is going on saying it's not okay it's not okay but till the time you find an alternate solution you must follow this system it is not open to any government or any body or any authority under our constitution to say that we are not going to follow it i mean you say that the government is sitting over the recommendations yes. four years ago i don't think it's a case of sitting over i, I think it's a case of cocking a snook yes. i'm not going to do it i mean four years you can't be sitting over four years so sitting over can mean one month two month three month six months it can't mean four years and therefore the court must act now why I mean, that's what i wanted to know in conclusion on this subject what should the court do should they right as you said the the government may not write back they may just keep silent uh what should the judges do when a judge is being denied his judgeship prima facie on what seems extremely subjective considerations that because of a judge's sexuality or or an individual sexuality he will not be made a judge you are not lo looking at his uh, his quality of his law or the quality of his work you are looking at something which is completely extraneous see rajdeep is very simple if a court delivers judgment in our system it is the job of the court to ensure that the judgment is followed whether it's a private property case whether it's a case dealing with shares of a company whether it deals with the service jurisprudence about promotion about appointment it is the job of the court to ensure that judgment is followed now obviously once the highest court in the land has taken a view in a particular matter or a judgment or a decision it is the job of that court to ensure that it must be followed and there are systems and procedures for making a party follow a judgment it's not something novel you can always take up those those uh, practices and rules and enforce it so you're calling on the supreme court in a way of taking up uh, yes. uh, saurabh kepal's case aggressively yes. with the government of the day See, saying simply follow yes. what lies in the law of the land and the court has powers to force you to follow otherwise the court and the system will be a system uh, subject to ridicule i mean i will tomorrow go and tell the supreme court you may pass a judgment against me but i am not going to follow it let's see what you can do the moment that happens the entire system of rule of law we will we will uh, we'll completely uh, crumble uh, you will have a law of the jungle then ironically you are saying this while also saying that the collegium system needs to change true but till it changes right follow it up okay so you know just 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 yes go just ahead one more point the supreme court is not in the habit of giving advice it gives judgments which are meant to be followed it's not just saying things okay this sound i think this should be the case but you choose whether to do it or not uh, right individual citizens are expected to follow the law of the land individual citizens are expected to obey judgments of the court in a court when we see blind lady justice with a scales in her hand an individual is the same as a government it cannot be that the law binds an individual they are forced to follow it but when it comes to the government they get a free pass right that's important i i want to do understand uh, uh, saurabh as an individual therefore do you feel less than equal you know the constitution of the country guarantees equality do you feel less than equal today 
when simply because you've been open, candid, and honest about your sexuality, the institution which you're part of seems to almost reject you or the government of India. Why blame the institution? The government of India, which is there to uphold the constitution of the land, is rejecting you. Well, of course I feel less than equal. There's no question about that. You feel that. less than equal. Of course. It is quite, quite evidently the case that it's less than equal. And I'm not going to give the collegium a free pass either here. Right? It's well and good to say that the government is sitting on a file. Yes, they are. But what exactly is the collegium doing about that either? So they too are sitting on it. Right? It takes two to tango. So it's very uh, easy to blame the government. And yes, one can blame the government. But it's not as though the collegium has covered itself with glory either. Do you think civil society, though, should stand up in a way? Uh, the same civil society that stood up in a way to ensure the decriminalization of Section 377. Do you believe that's possible at all when you're faced with the might of the Indian state on the other side? Well, I think I believe in the power of civil society. It's far more than the might of the Indian state, right? If you have true protest, if you have a true revolution... One revolution happens every five years in the ballot box. But there can be a daily revolution that happens in the simple act of resistance by the individual concerned. So I think, yes, it can happen.